as I'm making this video, I realize it's going to be a little longer than I anticipated. So to compromise for this, I'm going to put timestamps for everything I talk about in this video. All the guns, boosters, and mysticals if you just want to go to a specific part or section. Um, one more thing. You're going to be able to hear my fan in the back. I'm so sorry about that. I did not know it was that close and you could hear it. But besides that, uh, here's your video. Yo, what's up people? Welcome back to another Uncharted 4 multiplayer tips and tricks video. In this one, we'll be talking about loadouts. What are the best guns to use? Best purchasables? And more importantly, the boosters. What's meta? What's not super meta? What's an S tier gun? What are the S tier guns? What are the sucky guns? Which ones should you avoid? You know? So, and I'm here to tell you all that. All this is pretty much opinion based off of my playtime. Me slaving myself in ranked. Seeing what's been abused. And, you know, things along those lines. What, what have I abused personally? <laughs> you know, because I'm just as guilty. So, yeah. Um. You know, I'm, I'm not going to try to make this super long because there's a lot of content. There's a lot of guns. I'm just trying to, I'm going to just try to rate them from 1 to 10. Tell you, and you know, it just, I'm going to try to make this short, simple, and, uh, as, you know, as sweet as possible. Um, you know, I'm not going to go too in depth on everything. You know, I say that's more for you to figure out and just uh, as you go on play time, what, you know, what works for you. So yeah, AK, AK, it's a mediocre gun, what I rate it for 1 to 10, I would give it, I would say a, a 6, a, a, the AK is really a 6 to me, it's a, it's a mediocre gun at best, you know, I've never really played ranked, and you know, at one point, just like say, how, man, th th this man with the AK is really, you know, grinding my gears, bro, he's making me mad, Nah, it's never been that. A the AK is really good in like casual modes and stuff like that. So, you know, in a really competitive setting against good players, you don't want to use the AK. Trust me. The foul. The foul is an amazing gun. 10 out of 10. No, that's a non-negotiable. If your aim is really good, this gun is a 10 out of 10. Easily. Mazer. <laughs> I'm not really even going to rate the Mazer. It has a potential to be a 20 out of 10 if you can hit your shots so it's a bolt action sniper rifle one shot to the head two to the body really simple uh mp3 4a really good submachine gun um you know back when ranked was actually you know playable um you know this was this was uh in the meadow i would give the i would easily give this gun an eight eight for sure metler 10 out of 10 easily 10 out of 10 this gun is broken it should have been nerfed nothing really more to say about the metler comes with a scope um really easy to aim recoil easy uh really easy to you know control but yeah on with that xcr 0 out of 10 should have been burnt in in-game files let's move on copperhead a holy god this is a this is a demon gun honestly 9 out of 10 um if you if you get if you can get yo uh if you get yo if you can get used to you know aiming in a scope every time you aim down sight and like work around that in a certain way this gun is amazing easily i mean it's a shotgun I mean, there's not really too much to say about a shotgun. It's average. Don't really see this. I never. I, I don't know if I've ever really played ranked to see a you know a shotgun. HS39. Easily the best automatic uh, gun in the game, honestly, in my opinion. 10 out of 10. That might be a little biased, but you know, even with that biased opinion, I still I would still say that HS39 is a 10 out of 10, easily. Um, you know, people may argue that, but I, I, I say it's a 10 out of 10. M14. It's a good gun. Never really saw this in ranked. 
uh, you know, I would say it's average at best. I give it like a seven or something. Um, I think it's like two shots to the head or something. And like, well, nah. Man, I I, I really didn't. I, I really forgot like the damage profiles or you know how many shots it takes to kill with the M14. It's like it's I know it's like three to the body. Maybe one or two to the head or something. One body shot. I mean, one headshot to change how many shots it takes to kill. Um, P90. I would say it's good. Nothing really too much. Not super meta. I'd give it a seven. Um, Arrowhead. Decent. I will honestly use the Copperhead over uh, Arrowhead any day. It's a mediocre gun at best. I'll give it like a five. Scott Lowe. By his opinion here, I would give this gun an eight. I, I mean, I really love this gun. Um, Harrison. Zero. M4. Oh, man. M4 is it, a decent gun to me. Not really super competitive if you're playing like really, really good people. I would say. Like, you know, there, there's just been so many moments where I'm playing, like, the sweatiest people in the world, and, like a team full of HS-39s, and I'm using an M4, and I'm getting murked every fucking gun battle, and it's like, oh, you know, you know, let me let me switch to HS-39. I, I'd probably be able to compete a little better. <laughs> so, let's say it's definitely more of a casual gun, and, in the, in like, a casual playlist would be better. So, yeah, I, I give this gun... Did I rate it? Man, I don't even know if I rated it. Seven. Pack 80, one. Insass, uh, six. Decent gun. Type 95, I give it an eight. Really good. Uh, Kerrigan, I don't like it. Unbiased, I mean, really biased opinion here. Four. Negative seven. Now we move on to handguns. Handguns, handguns, handguns. The Aegis 9mm, 9 out of 10. I remember when this gun didn't have a, you know, didn't cost a loadout point. That was really broken. I, I praise God that day when, it, when those past notes released. 9 out of 10. Power 45, somewhat of a biased opinion here. 8 out of 10. It's a solid pistol, kind of underrated in my opinion. Rafika, 2 out of 10, don't use it. Foza, average pistol, it's a 6. Pistole, it's a 10 out of 10 with clip capacity. <laughs> um, two. Let's be real here. You're never going to pull this pistol out unless you're low on ammo on your long gun and you just need to KO somebody. You're never going to get an engagement with this unless you're really that depleted on ammo. Bishai. 100 out of 10 if you can hit your shots. Especially with clip capacity. I think it's like three shots to the body, one to the head or something. I don't know. For, I, I forget for these weapons. <laughs> um, Enforcer. It's a pea shooter. I gave it like a 5 out of 10. It's really average. Arkawal, there's fun to be had with this gun. Um, I would, you know, I'll run it in a fun loadout. The main thing that really holds this gun back is this fire rate. But besides that, I would, I would give this like a like a 7. DC, single action, a 1. RKL, just pick the micro 9mm. <laughs> just, just use the micro 9mm. 10 out of 10. Oh, man. Uh, Para. This gun is actually not that bad. It's super underrated. I'll give it a 7. Infinite out of 10. This gun is broken. If you don't have it unlocked, get it. Get it. Just get it. Don't don't argue with me. Chat. I don't hear another word. Get it. This thing comes with a scope. It's basically, think of this gun as like a pocket meddler. This, this is, that's basically what the Krivosk is on steroids. <laughs> I think it's actually better, uh, better than the meddler in my opinion. So yeah, those are the handguns. We move on to purchasables. Um, not really going to go, like I said, too in depth with the purchasables. It's really your play style, whatever you're going for. Uh, you know, I'd say how they should be used. You know, um, Wrath of Eldorado. Really only good in objective modes, plunder, king of the hill, bounty hunter, 
I don't ever use this in TDM. I don't know why you ever bring this in TDM. Sintamani Stone, only really good with full revive in my opinion. I would I would never use a Sintamani Stone without the full revive mod. It just it just seems useless to me. Uh, staff, if you're playing like some type of support role with a medic, uh, if you're like a medic support role, I would say a staff would be pretty useful. Um, spirit, you know, if you're a really aggressive player, you can do some work with this. Angels of Eternity, really annoying. It can be annoying just as bad as the Wrath of El Dorado, especially if you're playing King of the Hill. And you make like a whole field of like two, three Angels of Eternities placed in one spot. It just makes a, like a whole area de uh, denial for a whole long, I mean, for just for a like for a long time, pretty much. I mean, like you should be able to capture a hill if you, if you got like a coordinated team and you just place these in like the entrances. I mean, there's nothing, there's nothing the opposing team could do. It's kind of busted. Uh, Path of Indra. Nothing really too much to say about this. Teleport the teammates. Um, personally, this is one of my favorite mysticals. Um, I use this with the Hurricane Cake. Um, it just it just makes sense. Uh, Shield of Asgard. You can make this work if you pull it off at the right time. Nothing really too much to say about this. You take 75% less damage, but you move 50% slower. It's a good trade-off in my opinion. Gear. Nothing too much to say about gear. Grenades are amazing if you know how to use them right. Revive packs. There's actually a subtle tip about revive packs that a lot of people don't know. Y'all, y'all can if a, if a teammate is sitting on another side of the wall and you necessarily can't get to them, throw your revive pack at the wall. Revive packs can go through walls. It, it's amazing how a lot of, a lot of people still don't know that. Like people will run to a certain area just to throw a revive pack. Like bro, you can throw it through a wall. Do some experimenting. You see a teammate down in a certain area, throw your revive pack at a certain spot, and you may get lucky. Smoke bombs, really underrated. I'm surprised that more people don't use smoke bombs, and a lot of people don't know that smoke bombs are a hard counter to sidekicks. So if you throw like a smoke bomb or you have like a smoke bomb doing some like type of area denial in it, um you know like in a certain part of the map sidekicks cannot shoot you at all you can literally walk up to a brute and do a charge melee and he can't shoot you or like he can but he won't because he's in the smoke bomb so that's a you know that's an interaction a lot of people don't know about mines c4s if you're a camper just use them there's really nothing too much to say about them heavy weapons we're gonna make this really fast for the heavy weapons. Let me just tell you what's good and what sucks. Um, China Lake, amazing. <laughs> China Lake, um, Idly can be like one of the highest, lowest skill cap weapons in the game. It's weird. Stoner, don't ever use it. RPG, amazing. Not really. Sa I'm not really gonna say if this is a bad heavy weapon. If you can hit your shots, especially headshots, this can be really good. Condor. Amazing, in my opinion. ARX is shouldn't exist. Potential. To I mean, this is I mean, this all this sniper is is really potential. I mean, if you if your if your aim is really good, then you know you can make you can make opponents really scared to like peek their heads at all. This shouldn't exist. The weakest heavier weapon in the game. Brute really amazing especially in objective game modes like king of the hill where you can just hold a spot down having two three brutes out at once if you can coordinate with a team is just super super busted i get i get ptsd from rank thinking about that survivor i mean <laughs> survivor savior uh really good sidekick all around nothing really too much to say about it i like to throw on the toss revive pack mod on it I don't think it throws revive packs this at you. It throws revive packs at a um, teammates as well. S uh, sniper sidekick, really good for just holding an area down. Nothing really too much to say about this. I don't. I don't really think there's a right and wrong way to use a sniper sidekick. Just place it down in a really good spot. I mean, just like in this video. Um, Hunter, 
this shouldn't exist. I mean, come on now. Free kills? Who the hell thought of putting this in the game for free? Now we go over the boosters. Um, I'm not going to go over every booster because if I'm being honest with you, 90% of them are useless. That's <laughs> 90, like, I'm um, being for real, like, 90% of these boosters are useless that you probably never ever use. Not even in, like, a fun troll build. Like, most of them are useless. So, the best boosters in the game. Now, if you ask me right now, Blake, what is the best booster in the game? Undoubtedly, unarguably, what should you have in every single loadout? Weapon Expert. If you do not have Weapon Expert, get it unlock it buy it whatever you got to do get weapon expert use it it is the best booster in the game unarguably undoubtedly i mean there's nothing anybody can do to change my mind on it there is this is the best booster in the game period you know and uh, weapon expert 2 you know uh a lot of people don't say Weapon Expert 2 is worth it, but, you know, sometimes it can if you just got extra, you know, two loadout points or whatever. I mean, not two, but one. And you can you can catch a lot of people off guard by canceling your roll early. Especially, if, like, if you roll behind a piece of cover and, you know, your character just instantly pops up. You know, it can catch a lot of people off guard. Um, so, yeah. What's the runner-up behind Weapon Expert, though? It's Hardened. This one is uh, opinion based, but I think a lot of people pr probably agree that this is probably the second best booster in the game as well. Some people will say, no, I, I can control the damage flinch or like, no, nah, this is a crutch perk. For me, it's a crutch perk. This is literally in every single loadout. It has to be in every single loadout. I mean, it, it is just a non-negotiable weapon expert and hard and just have to be in my loadouts. And it is just it's a good it's it's just all around a good perk. It's it's really simple. Reduces your damage flinch. Flinch in this game is really high. And it seems like more weapons more not more weapons, but some weapons in this game give you more flinch than others. So to be able to control that a little better is huge. To win a lot more gun battles. Another amazing booster, mark on damage. Pretty self-explanatory. You shoot someone, do damage. If they don't have stealth, they're marked. I mean, it's, what else do I have to say? Mark on damage 2 is good alone. Don't ever use mark on damage 1. I don't know why you ever use that. What if you're not even using explosive? It's a waste of loadout points. Use mark on damage 2 if you're going to use mark on damage. Um, I mean, if you really want to overdo it, use mark on damage 3 for the outline. See them in real time exactly what they're going to do. You know, once you get mark on damage 3 on someone, it's really easy to rush them. There's nothing they can do most of the time. Combat Revive, really amazing, especially if you're using Revive Packs. You know, anytime you revive somebody, you know, whether that's touching them or using a Revive Pack, you get 15 seconds off your next Revive Pack. And that is broken. That is absolutely broken. I think I got some gameplay with this of me using combat revive and revive packs and at the end of the game I think I had somewhere around like 15 revives or something. It, it was something crazy. Stealth. Stealth is a really good booster. Um, I will only use stealth 3 if I'm going a full stealth loadout with a suppressor on my gun. If I don't have a suppressor on my gun then I'm just going to stealth 2 because it just makes no sense to me if I'm going to be picked up by a staff. And then I'm just firing an unsilenced weapon. I might as well just go full stealth. It just makes more sense to me. Whatever you want to do. But, you know, if you don't like being rushed, you know, every time you get marked, then stealth may be the perk for you. You know, at one point it was a crutch for me, but, you know, since this game is not what it used to be, really, I, I kind of like took a step back from using stealth so much. Helping hand three. Don't ever use any of the other helping hands. I don't know why you would. Helping hand three. You revive uh, ally back to full health. And you revive 50% faster. This is one of the most clutch, crutch, clutch and crutch at the same time perks in the game. 
Especially if you're playing a team mode, like King of the Hill, and you need people to stay alive while you're on the hill. Oh my goodness. So, yeah. The rest is, you know, for the rest of the boosters, that's for up to you to figure out what works well for you. You know, what you like to use. Like Silent Assassin 2. Stealth 3. Suppressor on your weapon. Easy, equals more stealth. You know? Uh, like, uh, if you're a team player, use Gifting. Lock and load uh, two, scavenger three, really synergizes well together. Um, basically, what lock and load does is anytime you kill someone, bullets are automatically put put back into your magazine without reloading. So hypothetically speaking, you know, with scavenger three, when you pick up ammo from any distance, so hypothetically speaking, if the op opportunity presents itself. You can mow down a whole team without reloading. The most I've done with Scavenger 3 and Lock and Load 2 is four people. It, it was it was amazing. I, I felt like I had a minigun, but that, my minigun was an HS-39. So it was fun. So, you know, there, there's fun, there, there is fun to be had with some of these boosters. You, gotta, you just got to find out and, you know, play with it. But, yeah, that's just really useful. So, yep. Those are the loadouts. That's what's good. That's what's bad. Was metal. Was not. I hope this was helpful. You know, if this was, leave a comment, like, and subscribe. Let me know if, the, like, you know, if, if this actually helped. Like, let me know. Like, I, I want to know that I'm helping people with these. Um. You know. It just, it just gives me, it just gives me a sense within myself to make more of these. Um. But yeah. I'm done talking. If you haven't watched my last tips and tricks, it shows you how to use grenades a little bit better. If you need help using grenades, I mean, go ahead and go watch it for me. But yeah, I'm out. I don't know what I'm going to make my next one. I might go over, like, ledge kills, how they work, or, like, platforming. Something simple. And, you know, go into advanced tips on that later. But yeah, I'm done. See y'all later. Have a nice day, night, morning, whatever, and see you on the next one.